Awesome. Welcome to do metal flow stuff. Glad you're all here. Um, oh, I have yoga blocks. Um, I'll show how you might use these at some point. If you don't have yoga blocks and you have like really big thick books and you wanted to use those or anything else that you use, um, you won't need them. You're just going to need to say to your ego, be gone with you. I'm not going to worry about straightening my leg or whatever it is that seems like weird or unreasonable uh, if you don't have the box to work with. Um, just didn't mess up your practice. Um, I was using tennis balls and then I realized probably not everybody has tennis balls. I have a tennis ball and um, it was interesting to me to kind of think lately about um, perspective and how useful it can be to like create a perspective that helps us to um, manage our reality, but also we have to have a perspective, we have to be working with a perspective that does exist in reality. Like, so you know, a lot of people think like tennis ball, like playing tennis. My, like, my reaction when I like think of or see a tennis ball is, ooh, I want to go roll around on that and it's going to feel a lot better because I would never purposefully play sports ball. <laughs> at least that would not be my first instinct on those things. I look at a tennis ball and I think, oh, this is going to help so much going to be relaxing and not a sport um and I get to have like that perspective right it's you know like if I like my dog if I give her the tennis ball she's just gonna look at me like I'm stupid but then another dog is gonna be like this is the best thing ever ball and it just depends on the individual and their experiences with the stimulus and the thing is I don't I at least would not be well served by going out into the world and deciding my perspective is going to be that I'm going to go sell this tennis ball for $10 million or that, you know, all of a sudden if I like close my eyes and wish hard enough, there's going to be 10 tennis balls in my hand or, you know, maybe I'd like take the tennis ball, throw it at my car and it has like a full tank of gas. Like you can't, I can't be outside of the realm of the reality of our existence. Um, we have to be working with what is. And working with what is and what is real, you know, I know that this is a therapeutic tool. I've been going through some, some difficulties with my right hamstring. And I've been trying to have this perspective that I'm going to go into the practice every day just saying maybe it'll be looser. Maybe I'll be finding something that's going to help to soothe the tension and the difficulty that I'm having there. But because I have been working so long, it's trying to set my ego aside and for like knowing my body and just being realistic with myself. I don't go in and I say, nope, the hamstring is fine. I'm just going to pop down into the splits because if I did, I would hurt myself worse because I would not be working with the reality and the reality is that, you know, I'm managing some difficulty in that body part. And when we're able to come into that in our bodies, and then we're also able to come into that, you know, out into the world with our practice that exists off of the mat. And it's very helpful trying to find that balance. Thing. So, I'm going to toss that aside. My dog won't chase it. I'm going to take your index finger and your thumb together. Bring it to the center of your forehead, brush outwards towards your temples. Do this little face brushing to help clear ourselves out after the day or what have you. Then start at the sides of your nose, brush outwards towards your temples. And brushing from the temples down to your chin along your jawline. Then going from the sides of your nose down to your chin, brushing down your lap lines. Massaging the spot underneath and behind your ears. So there's a soft spot back there. And then above the soft spot is a little bony spot. And then right around that bony spot, 
is where your skull and your spine intersect, like right behind those bony spots. So if you lift up from that point, it's a really nice way to think of lifting the spine that doesn't create tension in the back of the neck. So stay there, lifting up maybe a little bit taller as you breathe in. Try to stay lifted as you drop your hands down into the glass. Let's take a few breaths, starting to even and lengthen your breath, being observant about what is going on in your body. I'm noticing the body that exists on your mat right now, taking note of any the perspective shifts you might desire to cultivate during our hour here together. Start practice releasing three ohms together. You're welcome to just continue with an exhale, let out a death metal growl, whatever, whatever strikes your fancy. Start with a big breath in through your nose. Exhale through your mouth. Again, like that. For three ohms. in child's pose. So if you've been sitting up on anything, go ahead and push it to your side. Uh, if you do have blocks or books or whatever the heck you're going to use and move that, bring it to the front of whatever your mat space is. I'm going to move around a lot, but wherever the front is of your mat, that's where you might need those later because I'm going to forget to tell you. And now you're prepared. So knees apart, toes towards each other. Walk your hands out. Try to rest your head down. Maybe wiggle your hips a little bit side to side. As you're ready to settle, just start to observe places you can offer some softness to as you take two more deep, steady breaths. Take your right hand over towards the right edge of your mat space. Your left hand will come on top of it. Put your head back down somewhere that makes sense. Just go ahead and rest it. And as you push down more into your left hand, feel your left hip tucking back a little bit more. Again, two deep breaths from here. your left hand, move it over to the left edge of your space, your right hand comes on top of it, rest your head, tuck the right hip back, push down strongly into the right hand. From here, another two deep breaths. Bring yourself back out towards the center. Crawl your fingertips out a little bit further and then curl your hips backwards towards your hips, towards your feet or your toes. Drop your head down. Take a really big breath in. Big loud sigh. And then draw yourself up onto your hands and knees. You might tuck your knees in so they're underneath your hips and so wider. Let's move through a few cat and cow. Inhale, drop the belly, look up. 
Exhale, round the spine, tuck your tail. Roll the shoulders back as you breathe in, opening the chest. Exhale, really curl inwards. One more time, big breath in. Big breath out. And then coming towards a more neutral spine. We're gonna take your left hand, we're gonna slide it underneath to threading the needle and then come up onto your right fingertips. I like to do this to open up the back. You're welcome to adjust the positioning of your arms. If there's a version of this that feels better to you, not that picky, just offering something. By all means, stay here. You do not need to take this next move if it seems a little scary, but you might take your right foot and hop it out to your side so it's more or less in line with your hips. Notice where you're tense. Notice if maybe it would be a better idea to take that knee and put it back where it was. And then try to soften into your next exhale. If you've got the leg out, leave it out. Unwind yourself back to being on both hands. If you need to take the leg out now, that's what you'll do. Try to root the pinky toe edge of the foot downwards. And maybe you come down onto one forearm or both forearms. Maybe you just have bent elbows. You need to drop your heart downwards. It's okay to kind of sink into the shoulders a little bit here. Low, a left, lift, lift your tail. <laughs> Word. Big breath out. Bring your hands back in. You're actually gonna come to stand up on this knee. I'm gonna shift to face you. You're gonna turn your right toes so that they face up. Now the hips are a little bit more even. Engage this leg. You wanna feel the thigh muscle start to fire up. And then you're gonna reach your left arm upwards. So if I'm facing you, I'm not mirroring you. Exhale. Inhale, reach both arms up. And then exhale, left hand to left hip, reach up with the right arm. So I'm not trying to find a side bend. I'm trying to find a reach. Inhale up, exhale, reach it over. Inhale up, exhale, reach it longer. One more time, inhale up, exhale, reach. Inhale up, exhale, reach. Inhale up, and then go ahead and take your hands down. You're gonna slide that leg back in. I mentioned I move around your luck, just go back into your table pose. We're gonna start the other side. So slide your right hand underneath, coming onto the outside of your shoulder, moving up onto your fingertips. Stay here, change your arm. Maybe extend the leg outwards. I wanna try to soften into the stretch of the outside of the shoulder here. Try to relax your legs in the hip sockets. One more exhale. And if you've got the leg out, leave it. I'm gonna bring both hands back up. If you don't have the leg out, now is the time to extend it. Try to keep the pinky toe edge down. Maybe you go down one forearm, maybe two. Let your heart float downward towards the floor. Like it's just sinking down in your rib cage, giving your tailbone the chance to point upwards a little bit more. One more breath. And start to bring your hands back up. And you're gonna take yourself up to standing on your knee. You're gonna turn the toes to face up, heart right up above your hips. Reach your right arm up, take a big breath in. Exhale, maybe reach out a little bit more. And then inhale up to the center. Exhale, reach up and out through that left side. Inhale up. Exhale, reach. Inhale up, fire up the thigh muscle. Exhale, reach. One more round, inhale up. Exhale, reach. Inhale up. Exhale, reaching. And then come back to the center. 
Go ahead and put both hands, both knees down. And from here, you're gonna take your left knee and you're gonna, um, left toes, you're gonna turn them back, right foot behind you. And you're gonna come up into the side plank variation. So I'm down on the left hand and the left knee here. Reach your right arm up and over. Allow your hips to press forward gently so you're opening up the front of them. You can always be up on the fingertips here if you don't want to put that much pressure on the hands. You're going to take now the right leg lifts up, bend it, turn the toes behind you. Reach that right arm back behind you. You can stay here, just extending them back very gracefully or maybe hold on to your foot. Especially if you're holding on to your foot, can you press the hips and the heart forward and create a little bit more heart open? One more breath. And then releasing everything back down into table pose. And then you're going to turn your right toes behind you, take your left leg to the back, reach your left arm up, and you're going to reach it up and over. Now you can see the shoulder blade will come close to the spine here if you have the arm. Put the earbud back in your ear, April. Okay. And then you lift the left leg up, reach the toes and the fingertips back behind you. You want to feel the heart and the hips pressing forward, the arm and the leg reaching back. The bind is optional, not a requirement to feel an opening in the front of the body. One more breath in. Deep breath out. And then release your limbs. Come back onto your hands and knees. We're just gonna walk your knees back a little bit. Take your heart forward above your thumbs. Open your collarbones, draw the belly in, and then slowly lower yourself all the way down to the floor. Wiggle the legs back a little bit. Adjust your shoulders as you need. We'll take three slow, open cobras. Inhale, lifting forward. Exhale, softening down. Again, inhale. Open the chest, it's not about how high you get. Exhale, lower. Once more, inhale. Exhale, taking it down. From here, curl your toes under, lift your hips up, push yourself up. Spread your fingertips out, press back to downward facing dog. Wiggle your hips and your head and your heels, opening up any space that you need to open there. Make sure you're pressing strong from the heart right down through your hands so the armpits press down to all 10 expanded fingertips. One more exhale. And then lower your knees down. Keep your toes curled under. Try to walk your hands back towards your knees. And if this feels like a lot, just want to breathe here, you kind of you feel like coming up into broken toe pose. If this is a place that you can breathe and find softness, it's hard to it's hard to find softness in broken toe. But even the hardest parts on our mat, if we can breathe there, we can probably breathe in the hard spots off of our mat, because I find that those are much more harder. Much more harder. Okay. Two more deep breaths. And back to down dog. Bring those hands forward. Lift the hips up. Oh, I just feel like the backs of my legs are so much more open. There's a lot of fascia, sticky stuff that runs all the way along the backside, all the way to the bottom of the feet. When I open that up, the whole down dog just lengthens. Big breath in. Big lab sigh. You're going to reach your right leg up in the air, look forward, bend your right leg, pull it forward, step it up to the front of your mat. And you might need to do some extra steps and you might grab your blocks at this point. You're going to take both arms up. You want to pull your inner thighs up. The spine may be a little bit longer. We're just going to take an open twist. Left arm forward, right arm going back. Notice my hips stayed pretty stable because I'm lifting this inner thigh line. Relax into your exhale. 
Inhale, lift the arms back up again. Exhale, take the hands down. Start to straighten your leg or straight-ish your leg. My right one is going to just, yeah, somewhere in between. When you get to your inhale, see if you can reach the heart a little bit further forward. Now, if I didn't have the blocks, I would not have a straight leg and I'd just be okay with that or try to be. On your next exhale, if you have the blocks, you're going to set them to your side. You're going to bend into the right leg so that you can sweep it up and back behind you again. And then set the foot down, downward dog. Inhale, take your left leg up in the air. So we're going to go through the other side. Exhale, bend the knee, curl it in towards your nose, step it forward, and then take your arms up to this high lunge. Two strong feet, lift the inner thighs, kick the ribs up maybe a little bit more off of your hips. On your exhale, come into this twist. Right arm reaches forward, left arm reaches back. Not at a full six o'clock with the arms. The shoulder doesn't technically go all the all the way back, but soften your belly. Exhale. Inhale, reach it back up. Exhale, take the hands down and start to straight-ish or straighten your leg. This one I can have the hands down. Inhale, reach the heart forward. We'll just stay for one more extra breath on this round. When you get to your next exhale, bend into the knee, clench your hands, swing the left leg up, breathe in, exhale, two feet down. Curl the belly and roll yourself forward into plank pose. Lower down into your knees first if you need to. We're going to go all the way down to the belly. Inhale, cobra pose, curling up and forward. Exhale, lower down. Lift your hips, probably keep your knees down, or maybe you don't. Push yourself up, and then press back to downward facing dog. Big breath in, big loud sigh. <sighs> Inhale, right leg lifts up again. Repeat that, step the right foot forward. Inhale, high lunge. Exhale, twist. Inhale, reach it back up, facing forward. Exhale, hands down, straighten or straightish the leg. Inhale, heart peaks forward. Exhale, bend the knees, plant the hands. Right leg lifts, inhale. Exhale, set it down. Still strong from armpits to hands. Left leg lifts up, breathe in. Exhale, step it forward. High lunge, inhale. Open twist, over to the left, exhale. Inhale, reach both arms up. Exhale, take them down, start to straighten the leg. Inhale, heart peak forward. Exhale, bend the knee, plant the hands. Swing the left leg up, breathe in. Exhale, set it down. Plank pose, inhale, exhale, all the way to the belly or just halfway down to Chaturanga. And then Cobra or Up Dog, a little bit stronger back then. Exhale, downward facing dog. Big breath in. Big breath out. We'll go one more time. Inhale, right leg lift. Exhale, step it forward. Inhale, arms lift. Exhale, twist. Inhale, lift. Exhale, hands down. Make the leg longer, less bent. Inhale, heart reaches forward, nice and gentle. Exhale, plant the hands, bend the knee. Right leg lifts, breathe in. Exhale, set it down. Left leg lifts, breathe in. Exhale, step it forward. Inhale, arms come up. Exhale, twist. Inhale, both arms lift. Exhale, hands come down. Start to straighten the leg. Inhale, lengthen your spine. Exhale, bend the knee, plant the hands. Left leg lifts when you breathe in. Exhale, set it down. We'll roll it forward again into plank pose. Exhale, halfway or all the way down. 
You inhale up, dog. Exhale. Downward facing dog. I have good news and I have bad news. Good news is you don't ever have to do that again. You can ignore me and go straight back to downward dog. And the bad news is that you really never had to do it in the first place because you can always ignore me and skip things. One more breath out. And this time we're going to step forward to the front of the mat coming into a forward fold. Maybe bend your knees a little bit, wiggle your head around, finding some softness in the neck. And then next time you breathe in, roll your shoulders back, lift your fingertips up your shins as much as you need to send the heart forward. Exhale, soften into the fold again. Inhale, all the way up, lift the arms, lift your inner thighs too. And set your hands down into your heart. Do a little standing flow for a little bit. You're gonna sit back into chair pose. Leave your hands at your heart. If you want to take the arms up and then open them as we move through this, you can do that if that feels intuitive to you, but I find it easier to move the legs, keeping the arms in close. So one more exhale, let it out. And then step the right foot open. You're gonna to start to set up a little Buddha squat. You're gonna to have to adjust your feet a little bit here. So they're not gonna go all the way out to the walls, which means that now your chair pose is going to go a little bit more like kind of corner wise than straight to the wall. So just kind of knowing that it won't be exact 90 degrees. Exhale, drop your upper butt. And then you're gonna step your left foot over towards your right, finding chair pose, which is going to be awkward at first, and it's okay for things to be awkward, we just do it until it becomes a more familiar kind of awkward. <laughs> Exhale, inhale, step it out, just do the squat. Let's exhale, step it over towards the left leg. I'm trying to keep my knees bent, I'm trying not to stand it up. Inhale, open it up. Exhale, close it in. Ooh. Inhale, open it up. Exhale, close it in. Stay there. Inhale, lift the heart. Exhale, sit it down a little bit deeper. And then straighten the legs, lift up, feel the hips press forward gently. And then bring your hands down to your heart. We're going to work through a flow straight back to downward dog. You can stay in a forward fold or go straight to down dog and skip the chaturanga if you like. Inhale, lift it up. Exhale, fold. Inhale, halfway up. Exhale, plant the hands. You can hop. I'm going to step back into plank. Inhale from plank. Exhale, chaturanga. Inhale, upper dog. Downward facing dog. Breathing. Big breath in. Big breath out. Bend the knees, look forward, step your feet up to your hands. Halfway up, inhale. Exhale, fold it down. Inhale, all the way up, lift your arms. Exhale, hands come down into your heart. And so we are getting an even amount side to side. I am kind of starting with the right foot, but we end there, don't worry. We'll do it a little bit differently this time. Sit back into chair pose. Take a breath in. Exhale. You're going to stay facing forward. Take your right foot, bring it back. So you find a lunge. Breathe in here. Exhale. You're going to pivot and shift a little bit into your Buddha squat. Go ahead and open the arms. It just kind of feels nice here. Yeah. So there's a little bit of shifting in the feet. It gets a little bit wonky as you go, but it might be less wonky the more you do it or it might always be wonky. We're gonna keep going over towards the right. So I'm gonna come into this lunge. Ooh, that's a lot of wonkiness. Take a breath in. Try to stay low, step forward into chair. Exhale. Stay there, inhale. Exhale. Step the left foot back again. Stay there, breathe in. Exhale. I need not that Buddha squat, that goddess squat. Stay here, breathe in. Exhale, maybe drop down more. Pivot over towards the left. Oh, I said we would open the arms. Okay, I'll remember this time. Inhale here. 
Step it forward into a chair. Okay. Two more times. It's going to be a little bit faster now. Inhale. Exhale. Step the right foot back. Inhale. Exhale. Open it up. Maybe we do a little bit more arms. Inhale. Finding the lunge. Exhale, hands in, step forward, chair pose. Take your breathe in. Breathe out. Step the left foot back, lunge, breathe in. Exhale, open into that squat. Inhale, lunge, move forward towards that left side again. Exhale, hands in, step it forward. Breathe in. Breathe out. Last time through, step the right leg back, breathe in, lunge, lift, exhale, walk, feet wiggling around, inhale, lunge, lift it up, exhale, step it forward, inhale, step it back, lunge, breathe in, said that twice, <laughs> exhale, open it up, lunge towards the left, wiggle the feet, breathe in. Uh, exhale, hands to your heart, step forward, drop the hips a little bit more at the bottom of your exhale, inhale, straighten the legs, and exhale, forward fold. Oh, hang out here for a moment. If your feet are not hip width apart, wiggle them there, then wiggle your hips around and wiggle your head around. Knees can be very, very bent. Do what you need to do to protect your back. Work with what is, not with what you think it should be because it would not be that way. It should be the way that it is, because that's what it is. We'll take an inhale from halfway up. Lift the heart forward. Exhale, plant the hands. We'll step it back again, finding plank pose. You can go straight to down dog or inhale in plank and exhale, chaturanga or to your belly. Open the heart on your breath in. Exhale, downward facing dog. Big breath in here. Big breath out. Look forward, feet to your hands, forward fold. Halfway up as you breathe in, long spine, lift the heart, that's what goes halfway up. Exhale, fold it down. All the way up, inhale. Exhale, hands at your heart. We do one more standing, this, this standing flow and then a little bit more of like a balancey weird flow. This is not going to be a bunch of chairs and squats, don't worry. I'm going to start off with wide legs. The toes are all facing forward. We're going to do a lot of feet wiggling and adjusting here again. It might be weird, it might be not. So you're like, I don't know, I, mind, I don't mind adjusting the feet. Cool. Awesome. We're going to start. Um, I'm going to still keep using my right and left the way that I have because I'm going to mess with it out. We're going to take your arms up, take a big breath in. On your exhale, go warrior two to the right side. You're gonna bend into that leg, open the foot. It's gonna be kind of a little bit of a long one. We're gonna inhale, peaceful warrior. Notice I'm reaching up, not bending back, kind of like that little stretches we did towards the beginning on our knees. When you get to your next exhale, you're gonna come down into side angle. If you have the time and you wanna reach down towards the floor, you're welcome to do that. You might need to breathe slower in order to do that. And then also knowing that we're gonna come from here back into the legs parallel facing to the open side lift the arm and then to the other side so we're going to bend into the left knee turn the toes notice the back toes turned over two into warrior two and i reach up into peaceful warrior it's an offering of my heart not trying to connect my ponytail and my foot because i don't want my hair to grow that long and then your exhale i'm going to come into side angle elbow or reaching down, depending on where your body's at. Don't jump your heart down, we want to stay open. Because we're going to have to take it all the way back up. Lift your arms reaching up, toes all facing forward. Let's go again, exhale, warrior two. Inhale, peaceful warrior, keep the legs the same. Exhale, side angle. All the way up. Feet are parallel, arms lift. Exhale, warrior two. Inhale, peaceful. Exhale, side angle. 
Inhale all the way up. All 10 toes turn. Last time, warrior two up there. Inhale up. Exhale, reaching forward. Heart is open. Inhale all the way up. Exhale, warrior two. Be as full as you breathe in. Side angle as you breathe out. You're gonna come all the way back up again. And then here you go, forward fold. Oh, goodness. Adjust what you need to adjust. Take whatever modifications work for you. Do a little dance and play if you like. And then bring your hands over towards the right or the left leg. I'm not mirroring you, that's what it is. Bring your hands over to one leg. <laughs> Whatever the opposite arm is, you're gonna pull with that crossing arm and hopefully release some space behind your shoulder there. Stay there as you breathe out. And then you're gonna bring your hands over towards the other leg. It'll be that opposite arm that pulls you in. Breathing out. And then you're going to come back to the center. Relax the back of your neck. Feel the backs of your ears release from your shoulders. And bring your hands to your hips. Lift your heart. Lift your belly. Come all the way back up. We're going to step it back to the front of your mat space. Okay. Flowing through to down dog before we come back up and move on. Inhale, reach the arms up. Exhale, forward fold. You can always come back to child's pose. Maybe just sit down for a moment. Inhale, heart up. Exhale, plant the hands, step back, plant. Inhale, heart opens and plant. On your own pace, exhale, lower. Inhale, heart goes forward. Exhale, press it back. Breathing in. Breathing out. Look forward, feet come up to the front of your mat. Stay in a fold for a moment here. Bend your knees as much as you need. And this time roll it up, just let your spine be nice and fluid. Head comes up last. Right. We're gonna do a couple of things. I'm gonna move through a few shapes. You will probably need to put a foot down at some point. I probably will as well. If you wanna know that you're gonna do these things close to a wall, I conveniently have one there that I don't use often enough. In your space though, especially if you find half moon to be a little bit hard to get all the way down to the ground for, if you have your block or your book or your whatever. And you can also just hold half moon and kind of open in the air without getting down to the ground. You don't have to do that one. We will start off, however, like so. You're gonna stand up tall on your left foot. You're gonna lift the fronts of your hips. So we're drawing the belly in. And lift with the inner thigh to take your right leg up. So that's gonna get us nice and tall through the center. Reach your arms up. Big breath in. Maybe get a little taller and longer through the spine. And exhale. Drop your arms down. Swoop that leg back behind you. You're still lifting your inner thighs. So we're gonna touch the inside of the right foot. Lift your inner thighs, reach the heart forward, reach the left arm forward. By the way, we won't do this three times. Good. Exhale, soften something, maybe find a little bit more space. And then inhale, back where you came from for just a moment so that you can cross the right leg over. You're gonna bend into the left leg, wrap your left arm on top. If wrapping up your eagle feathers does not work or feel good for you, you're gonna grab the backs of your shoulders. You're gonna squeeze your inner thighs together. The hooking of the right foot is completely optional and does not make or break the shape. You're squeezing in and continuing to breathe is where we're going. I love coming from this very closely bound eagle pose into the freedom of half moon. So you're gonna keep the left toes facing forward, right toes are gonna face out to the sides. Left hand reaches down. Right arm reaches up. Make sure that your arm and your leg are not going behind your torso. You're maybe a little bit kind of in front here. Okay. 
on your exhale, forward fold. Wiggle things out. Okay, this one's a little bit weird. You're gonna take your right foot, cross it in front of your left foot. You're getting maybe a little bit more stretch to the outside of the left leg, the outside of the left thigh, which should feel good after it was just doing all of that supporting work for you. Push more into the big toes if you need more of that. And then you're gonna keep your legs crossed. As you bring your hands to your hips, your belly to your spine, and then your heart all the way up over your hips. Which might have been a weird transition if you don't usually do it, or it was no big deal, which is kind of cool sometimes. And then we'll come on out of it. Yeah. Okay. Two feet down, bounce things out, shake them out. <sighs> and you might need, oh, move the block maybe, if that's a thing that you're working with. And then you're gonna stand up tall on your right leg, lift the front of your hips, lift from the inner thighs, both of them, you take that left leg up. And get a little bit taller. And swoop that leg behind you as you exhale, drop the arms down. You're gonna catch the inside of your foot. That's gonna help you to lift that inner leg line and keep the hips balanced. As you push the foot back and reach your heart forward, lifting the hips, or the ribs up and away from the hips. You have long spine to work with here. On your exhale, try to soften something that might let you open up a little bit more. And then swoop it forward again, lifting their thighs, coming back in. And the leg crosses over, foot can wrap if it wants to, or if the knees want to be. You're gonna bend that bottom knee. Squeeze your thighs together. This is a very compressive pose. Squeeze in that front line to open up the back line. Make sure hips are behind you. If you were to look down, you should be able to find your toenails. You might have fallen over in the process of that. It's okay. Exhale. Moving from this tightly bound space into the very expansive space of half moon. You can kind of see a little bit more from the back. My arm is slightly in front of my body. My leg is slightly in front of my body. If I go, ah! <laughs> Looking for those toes, I can see them because they're not behind me. And exhale, forward fold. Ugh. Mm, breathing, breathing's good. Tend to lose it. <laughs> Long held balance. Let's cross the left foot in front of the right. So now the outer right leg, the one that's supporting us is getting a little bit more stretch on this IT band on the outside of the hip. Push more into the big toes if you would like more of that. Of course, less into the big toes if you would like less of that. And then keep the legs crossed as you bring your hands to your hips. Lift belly, lift heart all the way up. And then put your feet back where they belong. And we'll move through another flow. This time we're going to go to child pose real quick before we move on. So just know you can go right there if that's fine. Good to you. And now lift up. Forward fold. Inhale, halfway up. Plant the hands, step back. Plank, skipping whatever of this you like. Inhale, plank, exhale, chaturanga. Inhale, urdhva mukha svanasana. Exhale, adho mukha svanasana. Up dog, down dog. One more exhale where you're at. And if where you're at isn't already child pose, we'll go there, untuck your toes, wider knees, front well, hasn't stopped and you're gonna stop down. If your shoulders are feeling cranky and you wanna bring your arms back or your back feels better with your arms back, you can do that. I really like the extended version. 99% of the time, this is where I wanna be, but that's just me. You do you. Work with your own reality, your own perspective. have to look at everything the same way as everybody else. One more breath like this. You start to come up. You can come to table pose and do these from table pose, or you can move from downward dog. It works the same way. I'm just gonna take a right leg and step it forward to the right hand. If your left knee did lift up, you're gonna set it down. And you're gonna bring your hands up onto your front thigh. 
And do a quick check to make sure that you're not like here, so that your hip is above your knee. You shouldn't really be able to see your thigh muscle. See if you can wiggle the foot a little bit further forward. And just as far forward as you can. Sometimes it doesn't go like very far forward. And then lift the heart up. Bring the hands to the heart. And draw the belly and the right hip back as you take your left elbow down to this knee. You might need to be here, just depending on how much your body is willing to twist. But if you can get the elbow down, if you can get the hands together, great. Lift those inner thighs again. Soften your belly. Push into the hands as the heart moves closer to your thumb. Okay. One more exhale. And then unwind. We're going to swoop it forward. Keep pushing down on the front foot. Lift the inner thighs. Turn the heart up towards the sky. And then take the hands down. You're going to step back table or downward facing dog. Wiggle something out. It feels nice most of the time, yeah. And then you're going to take the left leg and swoop it forward to the left foot. Right knee goes down if it was lifted. We're going to come up. Check the thigh. You know, sometimes it's just back here and they're like, oh, I just needed to move forward a bit. I'm going to have some more open space here. And then you're going to take hands or elbow or hands together, hands together at the elbow. Push into that front foot. Feel your inner thighs drawing inwards. And then soften your belly and you might twist more. Aligning things so that we can grow out from that space. Speaking of growing, ears out and away from your shoulders. One more exhale. And unwinding. Lifting the arms up, leaning the heart skyward. Hips forward, heart turns up. And your exhale, set it down. We're gonna step back. You can go back to your table or child's pose, maybe from down dog. You take this last opportunity for that vinyasa flow through chaturanga just to clear everything out only if you want to. Big sigh. And lower your knees. I'm gonna come down to taking a seat. Okay, take your right leg, bring it in. Adjust the flesh a little bit here. Feel the thigh bone pulling inwards towards the hip socket. It might help that you can turn your hips forward over your left leg and then come into a fold that feels good in your body. So you might lay your face down on your leg and you might like not have your face anywhere near your leg. And there is like no functional purpose for putting your face on your leg, but the functional purpose of this pose is to relax and soften inwards, to relax the back of the leg, to relax the back of the torso. So go to a place that achieves that, that gives you space to breathe into that. Because if trying to get here is just causing your eyebrows to knit together, there's definitely no functional purpose for that. Starting to walk yourself back up, lifting out of the shape. Or just go straight to the other side. Some body part adjusting. So rather than you know, the knee going down, which is going to tilt the pelvis back, pull the thigh bone in. It'll help to tilt the pelvis forward. And then you go forward over your leg to a degree that feels like you can soften and breathe with whatever it really is, not with what you want it to be. That doesn't even reach my leg here. Oh well. Softening my poor hamstring. One more round of breath. Start to walk everything back. 
I'm gonna come down to lean all the way down on your back. Just go ahead and slide yourself out there. Reach the arms and legs out long. If you can get a little bit longer and fuller, big breath in. Exhale, let it go. One more time, big breath in. Exhale, release. Slide your feet in by your hips, about hip width apart, arms down by your sides. Take a quick snuggle of your shoulders underneath the back and then push down into your feet, come up bridge pose. And if you can get up a little bit, see if you can wiggle your shoulders in more. Feel free to hold hands underneath your back. Try not to lift your big toes up. Try to push all four corners of your feet down. Feel your knees reaching away from your heart. Your heart is reaching up into your nostrils. One more breath in. Releasing the shoulders. Relaxing the hips down. And as you're ready, starting to bring the knees into your chest. Cross your ankles. Give a little rock around if that is appealing to you. Stay still if that seems better. Cross your ankles the other way. And uncross your ankles. Open your arms out to a T and drop your knees over towards the right, finding a twist that feels good in your body. So maybe you wiggle your shoulders around, maybe your knees are closely wound into your chest, maybe they're much further away. Find that space, take three long, slow, deep breaths. finish that last exhale you'll take the knees up and over to the other side making the adjustments that help the shape to feel open to you that help you to soften here once you find it then take three long slow deep breaths back to the center, set the feet down. As you start to set up for your final resting space, you might decide to stay here, you might take a seated meditation, or maybe you come into that more classic Shavasana shape. Feel free to set yourself up with that, whatever tools and cushions, etc. that you have around you, and just let yourself be soft for a while. Allowing yourself the freedom to simply be here, to soak in this very well-deserved breath.
start to bring yourself back to your body. Making some small movements to help you wake up. Just take your time remaining soft with yourself. But when you feel ready, rolling over to one side, turning inwards for a moment of gratitude for making it onto your mat today. For having this time to share together. Bring yourself to your own version of a comfortable seat, sit however it works good in your body. Bringing your hands together at your heart. Continuing to lift and open the heart as we seal our practice with an OM. Deep breath in. inside of our hearts, the light and the darkness that resides within each of us. Namaste. Thanks for being here.